You know, here's another case where let's say I want to initiate a short trade. You know, the market had a spike down, a reaction up. I'm going to put out a limit out there to sell, but in case I don't get my limit off, I want to sell stop to pull me in if it comes down in either way. So at least I'm working an offer to try and sell on offer, but I don't want to be left in the dust if it turns either. So you can use OCOs not only to bracket existing orders, but also as trade entry techniques. Okay, we've already had a good down move here in this market. It's not like we're just breaking out from the long sideways line that we see on the top left of the chart. Okay, we've already had a good leg down. We're just playing for a retest only, in which case I'm going to have a resting bid to cover my trade right around the previous low. What I'm saying is this would not be a trade setup that would justify trailing a stop. All right, so I'm just playing for a fixed exit. And in this case, you can see what happened. That's where the trade got filled. And of course, the market went lower, but so what? It wasn't a case where it would justify trailing a stop. So trailing stop functions really should be only used at specific points. You know, we spent a lot of work on that on Saturday. The specific points are breakouts from extended chart formations and coils, uh, you know, um, uh, trend reversal points and some specific structurals. Otherwise, you will do best playing for fixed targets. Trailing stops, haha. -ha.